here we have an assembly file with two watch subassemblies inside. The watch on the left is off to the side and behind the watch on the right. This image looks nice in the Photo View 360 preview window. And now I'm going to show you a way to enhance this image using depth of field, which is new functionality found in Photo View 360 2010. Depth of field gives an image a sense of depth and also trains the viewer's eye on a specific portion of the rendering. To access depth of field, We'll select the settings icon, which brings up the settings palette, and on the camera settings tab, you'll notice the new area, depth of field. To enable depth of field, click the checkbox. Once the checkbox is clicked, you'll notice the real-time preview window immediately updates with our depth of field effect. You'll also notice the controls for depth of field become available. The focus distance, which determines which area of our image is going to be in focus, has been set to 59.38 millimeters by default. As we can see from our real-time preview window, 59.38 millimeters is somewhere on the front face of this watch, making the rear watch out of focus. The second depth of field control is f-stop. f-stop determines how blurry or how out of focus the depth of field effect will be. By default, it is set to 10. A lower number is a more blurry effect. A higher number is a less blurry effect. Let's try adjusting these settings to see the effect on our image. We'd like to change the focus from the front watch to the rear watch in our image, and to do that, we can change the focal distance. We'll input a number of 150.83 millimeters, and notice the in-focus area is now on the rear watch, and the out-of-focus area is on the front watch. To adjust the blurriness of the effect, we can change our f-stop setting from 10 to 25. While the front watch is still out of focus, you'll notice the 25 f-stop setting is much less blurry than the 10 f-stop setting. Determining the correct focal distance often requires a lot of trial and error. We can eliminate this trial and error by using the third depth of field option, Focus at Mouse. Focus at Mouse allows the user to define the in-focus area of their image by clicking with their mouse pointer. Let's charge our mouse by clicking the Focus at Mouse button. When we do this, the button turns orange and lets us know we're ready to click and define our in-focus area of our image. To do this, we'll go to the preview window and click on a pin of the front watch. Our image now updates in real time, putting the area underneath our mouse pointer in focus and shifting the depth of field of out-of-focus effect to the watch in the rear. The final setting that will affect your depth of field effect is the overall image quality setting. If we click the settings icon to open up the settings palette, on the output settings tab in the render area, you'll notice a final render quality setting. If we expand the drop down, we have five options, preview quality, good, better, best, and max. This setting controls the quality of your final rendered image. We'll compare good and best quality settings to show how this affects depth of field. I'll bring up my final render window. I've already rendered both images at the good and best settings to save time. The image we're looking at here is a quality setting of good. And if take note of the depth of field effect on the front watch. It looks, it looks quite grainy, as does the rest of the image. So the quality setting is really affecting the entire image, and that does carry down into depth of field. If we switch to the other image, this is a best quality setting. And you'll see that the depth of field is, is much less grainy, again, as is the rest of the image. It's just a higher quality of image and therefore a higher quality depth of field. So this is the best quality setting. This is the good quality setting.